We'll now show how computation is mapped to FPGA using example. Here we have a high level code. We're performing accumulation operations. Specifically, we want to read a data from memory at location 101, multiply with 20, multiply with 42. And then we will add that value on top of the original value that is at location 100 and store the accumulated result into this memory location on 100. If we convert this high-level language code into assembly language using CPU instructions, we'll have something like this. Assuming we have a few registers to store the intermediate values, R0, R1, and R2. First, we'll load the data from memory location 100. And next, we'll load the data from location 101 and load that value into R1. And then we'll load the constant number 42 into register R2. Next, we perform multiplication operation on R1 and R2, which is to perform 42 times this data at memory location 101. The sum of this multiplication is stored into R2. And the next step is to perform addition R2 add with R0 and put the sum into register R0. And finally, we store the result from R0 into this memory location 101. Let's assume that these instructions are to be executed on a simple CPU. This CPU is a typical pipeline CPU with, with a few functional units in the data path. First, we use a program counter to fetch instructions, and this instruction will be stored into this instruction register where it will be further decoded. We also have in this data path a load unit to load data from memory using the address. Likewise, we have a store unit to store data to memory using a store address. We have a few other components, including register files. In this register file, we use register addresses to index these registers and so that we will have register A and B for computation. The ALU will perform the required computation based on the upper code. In our case, we have a multiplication operation or an addition operation based on the instruction. The result of the computation will be able to store back into the register or be pushed into the option memory using the store unit. And so we, we can see here we have a fixed and general architecture for executing all kinds of instructions. And the design principle of such a data path is to be general enough to cover all the cases in the data path. Also, it has fixed data width and a fixed number of operations. When we load a constant value into the register, we do not use memory components. We, we encode the constant value in the instruction. So when we load the constant value, which is decoded from the instruction, this value will be going through the ALU, which does nothing on this in this case, and the output from this ALU will be loaded into the register. It's not the best way to do it, but uh, based on given the fixed data path, this is the only way we can initialize a constant value and put the value into registers. Let's look at how these six instructions are executed in the simple CPU. First instruction is the load instruction, which is to load the data from memory location 100 and put the data into register R0. Given the data path, first this instruction will be loaded into the instruction register and then decoded. After decoding, we know this is a load instruction, so this load unit will be used to load data. And for loading the data, we use the address 100. The data loaded from memory will be then passed through this ALU and then 
passed through here to the input of the register file. And we know we're selecting R0, so this value loaded from memory will be stored into R0 in this register file. Similarly, the next instruction is another load instruction. In this case, we'll load data from address 101 and put the result into R1. So these several units, these several functional units in the data path will be used, the instruction register, the load unit, and the ALU, and then the register file. Eventually, the data from memory 101 will be loaded into register R1. The third instruction is load constant number. In this case, we'll use the 42 encoded into this instruction, and then that value will be passed through the ALU and to be loaded into the register file at register R0. In this case, the load unit is idle, and also the store unit is idle. The next instruction is the multiplication. In this case, we'll use the values from register R1 and R2 and feed into the ALU for performing the multiplication. The product of these two numbers will be put into the register R2. During the execution of this instruction, load unit, store unit, as well as the addition unit are all idle. The next instruction is the addition. In this case, the values from R2 and R0 will be fed into the adder and to perform the addition operation. The sum of these two numbers will be stored back into register R0. And during the execution of this instruction, load unit, store unit, and the multiplication units are all idle. Eventually, we have the final instruction to store the result from R0 to memory location 100. In this case, the value in R0 will be read and then put through this ALU, and the value of R0 will be stored into memory location using the store unit. As we can see that, these six instructions are executed one by one, and that's why we see this time axis going from the top to down to illustrate these instructions are executed one after another. During the execution, you can also observe that there are certain functional units that are idle during the execution. Now, in the next few slides, we want to see that how we can use FPGA to implement the same kernel function, but through a much simplified design. Specifically, we want to unroll the CPU hardware. You may have a question, these hardwares are hardware, how we can unroll them. The idea behind this unrolling is we want to use space to be able to execute the exact function that we want to implement. The reason behind this is we want to use the resources available in the FPGA hardware to implement this particular function using the exact resources that this needs.